Talking about desserts. Yeah. <laughs> you want to introduce the desserts and I want to show them? Just saying. Yes, uh, Dr. Pete Chakovitz, the man in charge of Blue Ridge uh, CTC. Dr. Pete, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Good, always good to be here. Always good to see the guy you brought with you today here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I knew you would like that because I told you I was going to do it the next time I came. You did. You were like, I'll hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> World-class chef Stephen Weiss. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning. And Steve, uh, we'll start to hold up what has been yeah. brought in here now, for a second, but we'll go one at a time with it. Okay. Well, Bill's too eager. Good, Bill. Yeah, you go. Rob has been absolutely petrified when I took the uh, top off, thinking I'm going to spill them and get goodies <laughs> all over the microphone. So, but Rob, he still has a panicked look on his he's, face. Uh, he's nervous. He's nervous now. Well, he had those at the edge of the table, and, and Steve spent okay. all day and all night slaving away at a hot oven no, for us, no. and I didn't want you to dump those off the edge of the you table. Were ta- you were concerned about the microphone. Sticky microphones what you oh, said. You don't, you don't want a radio engineer mad at you. Trust me. You don't want that. You don't need that kind of help. And this is of one, and you have two others there. Yeah, we got uh, uh, these are, Steve, what are these? Yeah, so yeah. we have uh, <laughs> Look like pumpkin uh, cookies. Or yeah, something. I like the, we have spice cookies. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, some really nice spice cookies. We have uh, uh, nice turnovers. We have uh, turnovers that were made this morning, and then we have cinnamon rolls. We uh, right here, yeah, yeah, and uh, the faculty and students at uh, the Bruin Cafe at the Blue Ridge Community and Technical College, we make those. We make those almost every oh, day. The aroma. I was yeah. just going to say, oh. I'm sitting here next to this box of cinnamon rolls, and I won't touch them. Um, but wow, I yeah, I don't. They say never trust a thin chef, right? Because you know, <laughs> but I don't. Know. I, I work out a lot. You, you <laughs> have to, <laughs> Doctor Pete. How do you work at that school and not weigh 400 pounds? Um. It's tough. It's got to be. It's tough, yeah, because yeah, the food is just outstanding. I assume you can you can just get the aromas going by the classroom, right? Well, you know, yeah, and you know, it's 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 similar to uh, someone working in a in a hamburger shop every day. The last mm. thing you want to do is eat a hamburger. Yeah, I guess so. That's but, not true. Yeah. Absolutely well, not do you, true. Do you remember the Nabisco Cookie Factory over on Penn Avenue? Yes. I had friends that worked there in college, and they said they they told them you can eat as many cookies as you want. So the first couple shifts. You're there. You're shoving your by, by the first end of the first second week. You don't want another cookie. It's a brilliant strategy. <laughs> I worked two summers at a potato chip factory, yeah. and people told me you're gonna hate potato chips. Absolutely not true. Well, um, I, agree with, I agree with you at a, a potato chip factory. Yeah. I, I believe you. Pretzels would be my weakness. I yeah, probably and we did those yeah. too. So yeah. um, yes, absolutely. it's the salt. It keeps you coming back. For it was more. like an I Love Lucy yeah. episode too. But <laughs> we'll talk about, about that yeah. some other but time. But Rob, the folks that do not know Steve's illustrious background, he's appeared on a national television on at least mm-hmm. twice, two occasions yeah. of a bakery cook-off, and you've won one time and yep. came in a close second the second time. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, you know. I've always uh, I've always been in the top three every every show that I've done uh, in the past, uh, and I'm I'm known for Food Network. But mm-hmm. uh, my the, the latest show that I, that I'm on that you could see is on Netflix. So it's um, what's it called? Is it is it cake? Is it yeah? Cake? Season okay. one is it cake? Yeah. I actually took a little bit of a hiatus this year. I, I was asked to be on a couple of shows this year, but I I injured my knee like three weeks before I was supposed to shoot out there, mm-hmm. and it just. I mean, it just. Were you uh, doing squats? The recover. Oh, the recover. <laughs> Actually, I was working in the backyard. <laughs> Don't you hate that? I you know, know especially know. if you're an avid exerciser, and yeah. somebody says, "How'd you hurt yourself?" I well, know. I was going up the steps. As, I've, as I've gotten older, the answer is, I don't know. I was yeah, sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. woke up injured from sleeping. <laughs> and that's what I felt like. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's that's a tough answer to have to give people. Uh, Dr. Pete, we have a lot of new companies moving to the area here, and I know you folks coordinate uh, job opportunities with these companies a with your training. A lot of training, right? a lot of education for them. Yeah, I think that's that's become our strong suit. Yeah, um, you're known for it now. And yeah, well, <clears throat> we work very closely with the economic development group here, um, and the statewide economic development group, and we've been extremely um, fortunate. In, in being able to deliver. P&G was the biggest one, but we right. had a number of other companies that came before them. So we got our act together when P&G got here. We hit the ground with our feet running and um, and trained, you know, well over a thousand people to start. And then um, it's been a good success ever since. And I rem- that- yeah, I was going <clears> to <throat> say, I remember a hundred years ago when I was on the board, um, you know, one of the first efforts, at least when I was sitting um was training um table games table and games, yeah. um dealers at um uh, at at hollywood casino and yep. i was like oh this is so cool um yep. 
<laughs> so yeah. yeah, that yeah, it didn't. The referendum didn't pass in 2007, so it was 2009. Right. When that passed, that was December of 2009, and by July 1st of 2010, they wanted to be open with 500 people on the floor. So we, I have never seen as much excitement and interest <clears throat> in in getting into a college as I did then. <laughs> we had probably 20. 2,000 people applied for 500 openings, and it was amazing. We were able to put down a, put together a small college, actually, to do the table games. And actually, now that you mention it, that's where we kind of ran into Steve. Yeah, that's true. Um, <clears throat> it was um, serendipitous that we were taking some tours of um, Epic Buffet. Epic Buffet. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and the, the, the big kitchen they had behind there, it mm -hmm. was just incredible. Yeah. And uh, I got approached by this <clears throat> young man. <laughs> saying young at the time you're at Blue Ridge and I said yeah <clears throat> and he said do you have a culinary program there I said no nah. we've been trying to get one established for 10 years we can't find the right person to do it he goes well I, I might be that person I I've always wanted to run <clears throat> my own culinary school <clears throat> and we said well let's talk so I thought this is gonna be a little bit weird that we hire <laughs> one of the people out of the folks that we're doing some training for but Let's explore it. And so far, I think it's the longest Steve's been able to hold I, down a job. Exactly, exactly. Uh, he's, he's been with us 17 years now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a long time, and um, I've loved every minute of it. It's uh, education is. We have two, by the way. Steve. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's he, it's been a passion. When you take a look at at the um, things that we we're trying to put in place, one was that uh, you know West Virginia touts itself as being a big tourism state. And I don't care what you've got to look at in terms of tourism. If you don't have good food there, you're not going to draw many people. Mm -hmm. So one of our guiding principles was we want to create top quality chefs to help the tourism industry mm -hmm. and, and to make West Virginia and Eastern Panhandle, you know, an economic development powerhouse. And we've accomplished that goal. I mean, yeah. how many students have we trained? Probably oh, several hundred. Yeah, yeah, quite a few out there. And, and they're all they're all mm. getting to the point where they're super, super successful. How yeah. long does it take to go through the culinary program at Blue Ridge? It's a it's a two year program. Yeah, so they all they all leave with an Associate of Applied Science degree. And um, different specialties. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you're a pastry guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's not just pastry. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, we, we have hot foods, we have catering, um, we have uh, retail, you know, so it, it, we, we run the scope of, of all, all food service. I've taken, um, I don't know how many classes, yeah. me, probably four yeah. or five classes. Yeah. I took a bread making class. Yeah. This guy's a master, yeah. absolute master. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a foodie myself. Mm -hmm. So now he did cost me about three thousand dollars because <laughs> I told him what my kitchen consisted of he goes oh, that's terrible you need a new dishwasher you need a new laundromat you need a new refrigerator so I had to replace everything to get yeah. and and you know I got the the layout just right um is it but, paid off is it working well for you yeah yeah I think so yeah <laughs> well I expect you'll be bringing in some samples next <laughs> time then. yeah they're not going to be as good as yeah. these yeah uh um, Pete I'm sorry go uh, changing gears a little bit, you mentioned tourism. Uh, Blue Ridge has been very active working with the state's tourism bureau, yeah. uh, putting together an interactive get to know the state and get involved with the state. Would you speak to that? Sure. Um, yeah, you know, Governor Justice uh, is very interested in tourism for the state and uh, has really put an emphasis on, on building that particular industry. Um, we were approached a little bit over a year ago to put together a, um, a learning package for people who work in the tourism industry. And uh, we're just about ready to roll it out. We're just about ready to make it uh, public. And, and it's expanded since then. Now um, we're, we're having an emphasis on middle schoolers and high schoolers, with different audience than people who are already working in the tourism industry. The idea initially was to make everybody sort of a, um, an ambassador for the state and for their region. Uh, when you come in to check into a place, uh, they'll say, oh, do you know about the following things that we have in our area? Everybody becomes an ambassador, everybody becomes a promoter. And the slideshow that we put together, PowerPoint show that we put together, some um, 12 episodes, I think at this point, 
does exactly that, and it's all, it's most of it is based on good active listening skills. If you don't have good active listening skills, none of the other stuff is going to yeah. work. And so it shows people, you know, how to greet folks, how to how to be the the person in charge of the front of the house, and that's going to roll out like within the next couple of weeks, I think. And it's been a real joy working with Chelsea Ruby and her staff, Anna Smith, um, to and they've been collaborating with us to to develop those programs and um, we're pretty happy with where it's at right now when it rolls out how yeah. do, how can people access it how can people look at it oh they um, would call our help desk uh, get a, a account set up and then they have access to it and we have a person who does all the technology behind the scenes so that um, it's it's a user-friendly experience for them Two questions for you, Steve, from our audience. So one is the cafe open to the public, and do you have scones? <laughs> uh, well, so yes, the cafe is open to the public. We're open seven days, or I'm sorry, five days a week uh, from roughly two, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 7.30 to 2 p.m. And that's both cafes. We actually have a cafe at Main Campus, and we also have a cafe at Tech Center. I work out at the Tech Center property. Mm -hmm. And scones, And yeah. the Tech Center, tell people where the Tech Center the tech is. Tech Center is 5550 Winchester Avenue. And that's the old Corning building. The old yeah, Corning, Corning plan. building. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, uh, yes, and we do have scones on occasion. Uh, we usually put them on uh, periodically, but um, if you did want to place an order, we can we can make an order. Yeah, for that caller, the president will buy them for you. <laughs> Sweet, yeah. we'll give you the best scones you've ever had in your life. <laughs> Next and question somebody is, wants the pepperoni rolls. You yeah, oh, do you, um, we do. We do a bunch of pepperoni oh, rolls yeah. as well. That, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. If you're in West Virginia, you have to make pepperoni. Got to have. Got to have. Do? And those are available at the main and the tech center. Uh, so yeah, so we have we have both uh, available. Um, uh, might have to do an order. We don't have them all the time, but we mm -hmm. do have a special order. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you do things? If someone says, "Hey, I need uh, a dozen dozen cookies for an event," they mm -hmm. can order those through. Absolutely, you? absolutely. Yeah, we have we have partnerships with our local employers, uh, people that we've partnered with over the years, and uh, and even though they're off property, mm -hmm. they continue to call us and ask us for special events. And yeah. Cake, yeah. How about Thanksgiving <laughs> pies? Yes. So uh, the brewing cafes uh, have uh, Thanksgiving pies. We also have a uh, Thanksgiving fundraiser that's coming out very soon for the foundation. Uh, and we have a number of, of uh, really nice goodies that are coming out. We're going to finalize the menu today and, uh, and have that out and bring it out to the public. And hopefully we can get some folks in there and get some money for the foundation. For so talk students. a little bit about the foundation, what the foundation mm -hmm. arm does for the for the college mm -hmm. and the fundraiser is usually still that first weekend in December. Do I have it right or have you changed? Yeah, we've it? kind of spread it out a okay. little bit, but, but there is an emphasis on that one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, the, the foundation um, has a mission of uh, providing student scholarships. Mm -hmm. And so um, we do a fundraiser several times a year. Um, uh, Thanksgiving one is one there where you can place an yeah. order and that money, um, after we've paid our expenses for mm -hmm. the food product, yeah. goes to support students. And oh, gosh, I, I've seen the list yeah. of scholarships that we give, and it's from where we started, it's huge yeah. now. It's, it's hundreds of students that we yeah. were able to benefit through uh, that fundraising. Yeah. In fact, Friday night, you've got an event. Uh, we have another foundation uh, event. Yeah. yeah That's it's on the terrace. The dinner on the terrace. Yeah. Uh, and to show you how easy it is to work with this group, um, my grandson loves their pumpkin rolls, and uh, I ordered a dozen. Mm -hmm. They'll be there ready for him to pick up. Yep. He's going to be on top of the world. So, um, Yeah, we have, we have good teams. Our, our culinary uh, staff staffing is, is split up into two sections. So we have uh, Chef John Leeds. Uh, Chef John Lane leads the HQ staff, and that's where the foundation is going to be uh, off the terrace right. this, uh, mm -hmm. this Friday. Um, and uh, and then we have the tech center. Tech centers, and and the foundation helps us out quite a bit. And scholarships. Um, we have high school students, and some high school students uh, may not have the funds to purchase shoes. So we we ask for assistance for them to do that through for our high school students. So. Pete, talk a little bit, uh, because Steve brought it up, um, about dual enrollment. I mean, this is a, you know, a, a program that has just sort of exploded. Yeah. Students in Berkeley, Jefferson, and Morgan, the, and Morgan mm -hmm. can, um, can come to the college, 
take college courses for credit while being still enrolled in um, in their high school. That's correct. Uh, okay. Yeah, mostly juniors and seniors, mm-hmm. mostly seniors, um, but they can take uh, general studies courses. They can start uh, in their occupational coursework, um, and we charge a whopping $25 a credit for that. And in some cases, it's covered by the state. The state has some dual enrollment money now that they provide for the colleges, and it's students basically go for free. Uh, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And then you graduate from college. One of the things that you graduate from high school Mm -hmm. with 24 something hours under your belt already. And you look at the amount of student debt, um, you know, loans that need to be paid back. And if you've, you know, knocked out a lot of the basics and maybe even higher lever courses as well. I mean, what a boon that is. Well, it's a tremendous savings when you think of, uh, let alone private schools. If you go to a public school now, I put my daughters through UVA and I don't know, I was paying $8,000 a year and I thought that was a lot of money back then. But now it's closer, now it's closer to 35 or 40. That's for a public school. Private school is going to be almost double that. Mm -hmm. And you take a look at that and you say, my goodness, how can we ever do this? And so the the idea of having courses taught while you're in high school that you're paying $25 a credit for, that is a tremendous money saver. You yeah. got to take advantage of that. Got to take advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, Pete, uh, Rob started the show but uh, saying how much you support businesses, local businesses. Mm. Part of that, you just recently got a new piece of equipment, a million-dollar piece of equipment yeah. that will do a unique function. Would you speak to it? Yeah. Um, EDET, the um, uh, electronic distribution or electric distribution folks, uh, linemen, and we know how important linemen are based on these two hurricanes that Mm. one we're facing tonight and one came through a a week or so ago, and people have to have electricity. Uh, I think I saw where there were 35,000 linemen sent to Florida to help out. Uh, That's what that program does, um, that we got the what they call a bucket truck. And you think, why do students need to climb a pole that there's three things and you know what they are you can't be afraid of heights can't be claustrophobic and you can't be on drugs to be in an alignment program and you think well why do you have to be able to climb a pole well there's some places in west virginia you can't get a bucket truck into you're going to be climbing so uh that grant that we got replaces the bucket truck which we had it's got a lot of miles on it and it's probably not roadworthy right now the, the the grant which we got through the EDA will provide a new bucket truck, which is roadworthy, <laughs> and students then can qualify for their CDL. You have to be able to drive the bucket truck when you take the job. And so our ability to um, qualify them to do that, it's not the same CDL that you get when you're driving an 18-wheeler. It's for that bucket truck specifically. So uh, that for us was a really, really phenomenal grant. Will help a lot of students and a lot of people get jobs in the industry. That was probably the first big industry we got approached by. The the power company came to us at the time and said, we got a problem. The average age of our worker is 55. Sure. In another five or 10 years, they're gonna be gone. There's nobody coming along, what can you do? We've used that model where we develop curriculum, we teach curriculum, and we market the job opportunities. We've used that over and over and over again, and it's worked very well. Bill, Bill, let me break in here real quick. I just got this text from Sheriff Rob Blair because apparently this is starting to become uh, an issue here in Berkeley County. If anybody receives a call from someone representing themselves as a Berkeley County Sheriff's Office deputy regarding missing a court date, please hang up and immediately call the Sheriff's Department at 267-7000, and an actual Sheriff's Office employee will direct you from there. We're experiencing a high volume of scam calls. Hmm. Never send money to anyone over an app, gift card, et cetera. The sheriff's office will never ask you to pay a fine or fee in that manner. So apparently that's becoming such a thing now that Sheriff Blair texted me to 
make sure I pass that message along to the public. Yeah, we mentioned this a couple, three weeks or so ago. I think uh, Eddie Gokenhauer or somebody was on, and we said the scam was going around. So. Yeah, so please heed that advice. Yeah, let me go back very quick. To reflect the breadth of the program that CTC has, or Blue Ridge has, I was actually thinking about another program. I, I was familiar with the line program. I'm talking about the plastic molding machine. Oh, that machine. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. You've got about you got 40, 40 seconds. seconds to sum that <laughs> yeah. one up. Yeah. That one is a, um, a special machine that um, PNG uses to produce bottles or PNG's co-workers, Technomark and Local Plus. Yeah. So we can we can train folks on that exact same machine so that when they get their job, they hit the ground with their feet running. Um, yes, it's um, a, a game changer. To, could, yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the final 50 seconds with Dr. Pete Chekovitz and uh, chef extraordinaire Steve Weiss, who's <laughs> on uh, Netflix now, too. So he's watching yeah. the Halloween Wars not too long ago. I think you were on that yeah. uh, recently. Yes. Yes. Right? Stay where you are, please. <laughs> chef Steve, you've got a big Halloween cooking class coming up, baking class. What are you doing? Yeah, so we have uh, Halloween cupcakes. It's a parent-child class. We have that every year, and we can't we can't not have it. Nope. <laughs> so that's a, that's a fun class, and we have the kids, and we have the parents, and we encourage everybody to wear their unif wear well, not their uniforms, but wear their costumes. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we get some uh, pretty uh, pretty fun uh, fun pictures, and we post that up on our website. That's, so that's Friday, a- October twenty-five, from five until seven. Will that be at the main school? That will be at the Academy of Hospitality and Culinary Arts. Yep, that's going to be at the, at the old Corning Factory or 555 Winchester Avenue. And that'll do it for our show today. The Dave Ramsey program is coming up next. This is Talk Radio, WNR Martinsburg and TV 10. And we'll talk to you again in 22 short hours.